Um, people buy on emotion and then they justify with logic. So what timeshare is doing is they're trying to sell people on logic and they're forgetting about the emotion. Welcome to the Business Ownership Podcast, brought to you by Awareness Strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I am here with my most amazing guest, Adam. Adam, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. Awesome. So tell us who you are and a quick introduction to your business. What do you do? Adam Butte is my name, and uh, my business is the Authentic Sales Training Academy. So what I do is uh, help small business owners increase their sales and profits strategically and authentically um, from end to end, working with their systems, processes, procedures, pricing, and obviously um, upskilling. Nice. I love it. So before we get into all of the details of that, how did you get into sales as a thing? I fell into it about 30 years ago. <laughs> um, I left school and I had no education post high school. And all I could get was a, a retail sales job. And, and then the, the sales career went from there. So I went from retail to wholesale to sales rep. And then it wasn't until 2001 where I landed my first commission only job and have been in the direct sales industry ever since. Wow. That is awesome. So when you're working with people, let's kind of delve into your system and how it works and what you're doing. And then we'll look at kind of who's your ideal client and who you love working with. What's, what's the actual process that you're doing? What are you taking people through? Um, it's, it's a good question. Now, coming from commission sales for, for 20 plus years, Michelle, it wasn't until I had my first 100,000 US commission month that I realized everything that I was doing was wrong. And um, selling products and services to people that don't want them, don't need them, and can't use them uh, seems to be the way of the business world looking to close sales. So um, five years ago, uh, that was a turning point for me. And it's, it's, it's really now around moving from, and this is what I call the industrial age thinking, which is transactional, mm -hmm. to the new age thinking, which is relationship selling. And when we're working from relationships, when we're working from um, being of service, not from KPI, then there's no such thing as overcoming objections. And there's no such thing as closing sales, which is what all sales trainers teach people to do. Awesome. I love it. So let's uh, alleviate the old school thinkers way and then we'll get into the new thinking way of it is why doesn't the old way of transactional sales and KPIs and let's draw a line down the middle of the page and see what they, <laughs> we, we all know that any of us that went through the old school training know, you know, those kind of sales tactics. What, what's wrong with those now? Why don't they work anymore? You know, people are tired of being sold to. You know, you, you walk everywhere you walk in. Uh, every shop you walk into, they're, they're jumping on you. You know, every time you open your phone, you're being spammed. Um, the, there's a massive disconnect. And, and, and it's because business owners have forgotten that clients want to buy. People want to purchase, you know, but we don't understand where they're at in their buying journey. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is forcing them to buy stuff before they're ready because it's about our results. It's not about their results. So uh, marketing touch points have gone through the roof. And, and, and you know, why, do, why does somebody need to be, well, it takes, um, it takes 14 times for someone to see you to have enough trust to want to engage, another seven times of actual interaction before they're ready to engage. Uh, that's a minimum 21 times that we have to be in someone's universe before they're, they're ready to buy. So if touch points are going through the roof, social media um, and the online world has just bombarded people with information, uh, people are disengaged and they don't like it. And, and I think that's why a lot of business owners don't like to sell because it's the icky sales tactics that they've been hit with that they don't want to necessarily do to the end to, to their clients. Awesome. So let's look at this new way of looking at things. 
what is important about it and what makes it work? There's a difference between selling to someone versus somebody wanting to buy from you. Now, um, when we're selling to someone, we're transaction minded. Mm -hmm. So the focus is on lead, close, next. The focus is not on nurture, support, retain, refer, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So when, when we're working with our prospects for them to want to buy, it actually costs us five times as much to get a new sale than what it does to get a repeat, uh, a repeat client. Mm -hmm. And our referrals only come to us when people are prepared to rebuy from us, whether they do or they don't. That's the only time we'll ever receive a referral. So do you want to move away from harassing and hassling people, getting the deal and just moving on? Or do you want to build foundations where your clients become your raving marketing machine forever? You've got deeper, stronger and wider foundations in your business that can withstand any market conditions because people are coming to you instead of you trying to figure out where to find them. Nice. I love it. Well, and it's kind of funny because I think I need to refer you down to a resort that we were just at in Mexico. Um, they did some things really well and some things were still in the yucky phase. So part of what the um, the facility that we were at basically had four different programs. You could go and rent for whatever and stay at their resort, which is lovely. There was a different resort that you could buy a weekly timeshare. There was a different resort that you could buy a permanent um, full-time access to. And then there was another yeah. all-inclusive, which was our highest end. And all four basically were for sale, of course, and you can do whatever you want. So they had a person coming to buy going, hey, how's your trip? How do you like it? Uh, you know, how's the service been? Awesome. Have you considered buying? And then they all of a sudden went into the whole, hey, do you want a timeshare and spend an hour and a half, two and a half hours with us and we'll waste all your time and we'll put you in the hot box until you buy. And it was really disappointing. But then mm. what they did really well was there was another one because we were at the all-inclusive side was going around going, hey, so, you know, how's your trip? Are you looking at coming back again um, to stay with us? And I was like, well, either yes or no. And great how long and how often would you like to come and and that side of the sales team was fantastic because all they were asking about was you know where are you at in your buying journey and where do you want to go from here which was fantastic and amazing so um as you were talking about kind of the old school way of doing things i think that people that are traditionally in that hot box sales arena where it's like you're here for i got one opportunity to be able to get you and i'm never going to be able to talk to you again thing it still doesn't yeah. work it doesn't work. And and when you're when you're operating that way, Michelle, burnout will hit you really quickly because you're at it, you're at it, you're at it. You've got external pressure coming at you from all angles. If you don't close, you don't and I didn't been commissioned sales for 20 years. If I didn't sell, we didn't eat. So I know all the old school tactics that that I've had to use in order to to make money in the past. Um, it leaves a horrible um feeling in the people that you've spoken to, they're never going to speak well of you if they remember your name, let alone the company that you represent. And what you're actually doing is you're tarnishing that opportunity for everybody else in that industry to pick up any sale because of an experience that they've had from somebody else that they've labelled in the same box. So when, when you look at the two differences that you just shared, um, people buy on emotion. And then they justify with logic. So what Timeshare is doing is they're trying to sell people on logic and they're forgetting about the emotion. Whereas the second person you had spoke to you firstly about how did you feel about your stay? What, what did you like about it? You know, would you come back? Would you, this is tapping into the, the, uh, the limbic part of your brain, which is all around feelings and emotions. And that is the part of the brain that encourages you to want to buy. Whereas the cortex brain, which is all around reasoning, logic, analytics, the whole type of stuff, that's where the sales world and the business world is hitting people from. They're trying to get people to buy from features and benefits as opposed to getting them to want to buy because it makes them feel good. Nice, I love it. 
So when you're working with somebody, what does that look like? Do they need to have things prepared for you or are you just going from where they're at and, hey, welcome to my community? How does that work? Yeah, when I'm, when I'm working with people, the first thing we do is we look at where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, we look at how long they've been where they're at and we look at where they want to go and we look at what has not been working for them. And when, when I can ascertain all that, then it's very easy to start to map out a plan based on that relationship model versus the plan that they're working from in that transactional model. Most small business owners are actually working from their reptilian brain, uh, fight and flight. You know, how many times have you heard that the saying of people saying, um, uh, I'm, I'm in survival mode. I'll do whatever it takes to keep moving forward. You know, that that's you can see that that's where they're at. So we need to transition them out of that brain into the limbic brain. We need to transition them into, into what's going to create those deeper foundations. And, and the easiest way to do that, Michelle, is to really understand their why. So I did a strategy session last week with a new client and um, this, this client has got an amazing product. She's got an incredible story, which has led her to why she does what she does. Um, she had a 27-year-old son that died instantly on, on her doorstep and he was a, one of her twins. And um, because of that, she comes from a corporate world and she was a CFO in, in corporate for a long time. She moved out of that and has created um, this amazing uh, program, a whole range of um, courses that she's teaching corporate people on how to deal with um, things like death in, in life, you know, because what impact does that have? on your work, it's, it's massive, um, but people don't know how to deal with it. And she's got it all mapped out, but her, 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 I said, what's wrong? And she goes, I'm not selling enough of my courses. I said, what do you want instead? And she goes, I want to sell more courses. I said, well, people don't care about courses. So let's get down to your why. And when we really were able to extrapolate her why, her real reason, her burning desire and passion and the change that she wants to make to the world, I said, that's what people will buy. And Absolutely. you could just see that light bulb moment, just it just boof, and off she went. And she's got this inspired action that she's going to be able to take now because she's operating from her why instead of operating from that reptilian brain of not enough. Nice. I love that. And what a tragic story to be able to go and help other people that, I mean, it may not be that dramatically. <laughs> happening and impactful but at the same time you're right it's it, it is an oddity in in the world right now i think to have period intense emotions like just let's just start there <laughs> it's an oddity yeah. to have intense emotions it is in my opinion part of the human spectrum but we don't really understand how to deal with them and we as a society spend the majority of our times trying to kind of minimize the wave of emotions. And I think particularly in sales, if society is trying to have this monotone emotional experience of the world, it becomes ever increasing even to have to engage people in an emotional con conversation, uh, especially when they have problems that they're trying to avoid and don't want to talk about. 100%. And if, if you look at business, I mean, the terminology, it's just business mm -hmm. in itself is wrong. Right. Because when, when we're talking it's just business, we're actually removing the entire human element of interaction. You know, money is a byproduct of service. That's all it is, right? And human beings have three simple needs. And if we can meet these three needs, then think about the, the impact that you have with your staff, let alone your customers. Human beings want to be loved. Human beings want to be accepted. And human beings want to be appreciated for what they do. And none of those three things, in my experience, have, are covered in corporate. <laughs> right. On any level, almost. No, on any level, right? <laughs> Except for so, around the water cooler. I think that's why every place had a water cooler. <laughs> that's the and that's the only place where they get human connection. Now they're gonna they're gonna use the water cooler chat, but it's the only place they have that ability to connect one-on-one. -on -one. And the, the good thing about COVID is what COVID's done is it's stripped everybody away from each other. It's pulled people apart. Um, and what people are craving for now is real connection. 
The challenge is the trust between human and human has been broken. So that human connection on that trust level, it goes way beyond know me, like me, trust me, which is all analytical thinking to um, resonating with people. We have our, our gut feeling and we're energetical beings. And if we resonate with somebody, that goes way below on a really deep level that we can actually have some super, super connections with. Nice. So what kind of companies are you noticing are making the biggest transition to you? Like um, yeah, I deal with small business uh, because my goal is to change the way business is done. I can't stand it. Now, I hate being sold to. I hate being lied to. I hate being manipulated. And I, and 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 what I what I really what? hate the most, you don't Michelle, like being manipulated. <laughs> no, I really don't. And and I I have to say, my pet hate is when someone comes at me for my money and doesn't give a crap about who I am as a person. So. Um, Making a change in the way small business owners operate, mm -hmm. working at the at the at the business owner level through to their through to their staff, um, and changing the way that that interaction is done in the business world one by one, to me makes a better place for everyone to live in, and it makes a lot more fun to work in. Um, corporate, not so much because corporate's an uncontrollable beast. There's no way that I could take this model, even though I've come from commission sales to go into, um, as the example that you used with um, timeshare, mm -hmm. there's no way that timeshare could evolve into that type of selling. I, I have hope for them, but <laughs> who is your favorite client? Who do you love to work with? I, other than small business, like what, as, what aspects of their business? What are they selling? Potentially anything. Yeah. But because my background has been all sales, like I've mm -hmm. I've done face to face and phones and CEO level to mum and dad, different sectors, different verticals, the sales are sales. So I, I'm not the type of person that's going to niche down to one. Um, I just want to work with growth mindset business owners mm -hmm. that want to make a change in the lives that they serve. Yep. Awesome. So give us an example of what kind of companies love working with you then. Um, there's, a, there's a few different, and the good thing about what I do is I can work with, with multiple companies, multiple industries because of my background. Um, one example that's coming to mind now, I'm working with an automotive workshop and this particular fella is in his late 60s. He's turning over X amount. He's got, I think, four staff, but he's not making any profit. And even though he's turning over a lot, he doesn't have the systems, the procedures and the processes in place and his pricing's wrong. So we were able to very quickly change pricing, which gave him another 30K on his bottom line within one minute, just by changing the way that he that he charges. Um, so I love working with people like that who are wanting to transition out of their business and, um, and have something that's actually saleable. Most small businesses are not saleable, okay, because of, for these reasons. So I get, uh, I get the ability to play with, with a lot of people in that area. Um, I also do a lot of work with marketing agencies. Now, marketing agencies spend a lot of their time talking to business owners about getting more leads and how much they are really investing in getting their leads um, on all different platforms. When I talk to the business owner, so how much are you spending on your marketing? 10 grand a month. Okay. How much are you spending on your sales? Zero. What's the most important part of your business? More sales. You can get as many leads as you want. Now, I've come from the world of making 100 phone calls a day. That doesn't mean you're going to make more money. That doesn't mean you're going to make more sales. And that definitely does not mean you're not going to make more profit. See, a lot of these small business owners that I'm working with are focusing on sale, not profit. And you can undercut your competitors until you undercut yourself out of business if you don't do it right. So... Let's switch that ledger around on how we convert them. Um, and a lot of coaches as well. Uh, coaches have got, uh, like the, the lady that I was sharing before, they've got some really great stories and can be quite impactful, but they don't have that sales knowledge and sales training um, and, and systems behind them on how to really get their messages out. So I do a lot of work with coaches um, and even personal trainers. I'm working with a personal trainer right now. Same thing. They all have the same problem. But um, being able to to put this in into a workable format for them that can attract the right audience, that they can have the right clients on board, that 
refer to them and refer to them and refer to them is is uh, is is my sweet spot. Nice, I love that. And I think it's it's so important, especially now, to be able to kind of tr- train the up and coming sales people on how important it is to be able to connect and uh, and yeah. and to understand what their wants and desires are. And I think we're at a really unique opportunity, especially right now when the 20 somethings are just coming out and they're coming out of COVID. <laughs> so they're coming at a point where they're not used to doing one-on-one uh, conversations at all, period, into a sales conversation, which tends to be very different. But the more they can treat that as a, hey, I'm just getting to know you and where you're at kind of thing, I think it'll also help to kind of grow society as a whole to have more compassion, more understanding and, and deeper relationships through sales. Yeah, hundred percent. And I'm not sure what it's like where you are, um, but here in Australia, every sales job mm-hmm. asks their sales people that are applying for those for those jobs to have qualifications and experience. Right now, <laughs> there is no such thing <laughs> as sales qualifications. I actually don't teach it anywhere. Right. Right. So like how? <laughs> um, how? So having some basic fundamental skills that you can work from and treating if you're looking at it from a job perspective treating sales no different to what you would do if you're getting a university degree Mm -hmm. for any other field it takes four years to get your education it actually takes 10,000 hours before you're an expert in your field Mm -hmm. this is the sort of stuff that sales people and even small business owners don't focus on on and that's why their sales are, are falling away Nice. Well, I knew, I know I wish that somebody like you was around in my life when I was learning sales, because to me, it was all like, hey, let's see if this works. <laughs> that that didn't work so well. It, it showed on my uh, payroll, on my bank account. Quite <laughs> so let me ask you this. What's the favorite part of your business, what you do right now? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, when, for me, my, what, what fuels me on the inside is when I can impart some knowledge that gives my consumer, my customer, that light bulb moment that's actually a pivotal change in, in how they operate. And when they implement that and get a result from that, um, one, obviously it affirms that what I'm talking about works, but, but two, it, it motivates me to want to help make more change in, in more people's lives. Nice. So... I kind of asked you for some examples before, but give us an example of a Cinderella story of one of your clients, kind of whether they came to you in a total mess and with the work that you do and where they're at now with those changes. Yeah, thank you. So um, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, one particular person who has, has just struggled to get sales. Like it didn't matter what they did. They've tried this, they've tried that, they've tried this, they've tried that. Um, what, what they had not learned is how to communicate with people. So we spent so much time really educating them. I spent so much time educating them on how to build real rapport, how to build real understanding and how to ask the right questions in order to be able to serve their clients better. And that process has taken them from turning over very little to turning over six figures in a very short period of time. Uh, And that's only because they brought back in that human element of two ears and one mouth, <laughs> you know, as opposed to two mouths and one ear, which really doesn't quite work for uh, for most people. But um, but yeah, great result for them. Nice, I love that. So, other than not having the revenue that they want, what are some of the other stumbling blocks that somebody might be having, and they're thinking, "Oh my God, Adam, I need you so badly." Yeah, the the uh, the, the first part is. Uh, making sure that they're talking to the right audience. So their marketing is out of whack. Um, I, I spent a lot of time bringing, my, my strategy is connect, communicate, and then convert. In that connection part, um, and if we're talking about relationships and we're talking about how people feel from the moment they have communication with us, um, we need to get that into their first point of marketing. So everybody's looking for a cat, the catch, right? And when people do direct marketing, um, the trust levels are just not there. But when people realize that um, they put their, an extension of themselves out to the world and what people see is an extension of who they are first, 
and then what they do second, then they've got 100% integrity in the whole process between the first interaction to the last interaction and beyond. So um, business owners don't do that. Uh, business owners do not have the right nurturing systems in place. Um, you can have a you can have a CRM, but we don't have pre-sale funnels. A lot of the a lot of the way that the transactional world is working right now is it's 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 top of funnel work. But that top of funnel work is to get someone to sit into that room today that we can close the deal on today. Instead of using that top of funnel to create your nurturing system and enabling the buyer's journey um, to, to come into play. So they, they don't have that in place. They don't have the after sale systems in place because that nurturing system after that first piece of um, 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 that first sale is actually more important than the nurturing before they buy because that's where we get the opportunity to really work with people for a longer period of time. The average buyer's journey is three years. So if, if a business owner doesn't have that three-year plan in place post-sale, look at all the sales that they're missing out on. And when the business owner is not separating themselves from their competitors, um, my mechanic is a great example. Um, I said to him, what, what makes you different to the other 10 mechanics in the same road? Like, why would I come to you? And he said, well, I'm a Bosch service centre. Uh, I said, so? He goes, well, Bosch is what creates all the mechanical items in the car. I said, okay, so that's a bit different to a Goodyear tyre and brake that's trying to do a service on my car next door. He goes, yeah. I said, so why would you want to undercut Goodyear tyre and brake if what you have is very different? We need to specialise you, position you as the expert, and then price is not the problem. If they're coming to you because of your expert status. So switching that business owner into that, that leadership expert status then gives us the opportunity to increase our pricing, which means we don't need as many sales, we can make more profit, and we're not time poor. So it actually gives us back more time in our business because we've got everything in place to maximise outcome for longer periods of time. I love that. So I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How did they start their journey with you? Thanks, Michelle. So um, you can jump onto my website, which is the Authentic Sales Training Academy.com. It's I didn't think that through too much when I uh, when I registered that. That's a big one, but uh, we'll, we'll no doubt spell that out for you in the in the show notes. Fortunately, there will um, be links in the notes. <laughs> yeah, there'll be links in the notes, and and on there you can actually contact me and and pop pop yourself into my diary. You can have a, a quick a quick call, fifteen minute phone call, and just sort of um, have a quick chat. Nice, I love that. So I have to ask you, Adam, at what point in life did you know that you were a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Oh, you know, I think it was in my blood. My, my grandparents were business owners. My dad was a business owner, multiple businesses. Um, I never fit in the system. <laughs> I was, uh, I actually had this conversation with my wife yesterday. I said, I'm un I I can't hold a job down. She goes, no, it's because you don't like authority. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I really don't like being told what to do. So um, that, it was pretty early on in my career. I think I was in my early 20s when I realized, no, I've got to be doing it for myself. Nice. I love it. So in your entrepreneurial journey, can you give us an example of maybe a mistake that you might have made that you can now laugh at or something that might have been embarrassing, but now it's pretty funny when you look back at it? Uh, Any of those stumbling blocks that you never would have had oh. as an entrepreneur or as an employee, but you get to experience as an entrepreneur? You know, um, yeah, I went into commission sales because of the lure of being able to make more money than what I could do in a job. Um, the the biggest stumbling block I had was three months of no pay and then learning how I had to really manipulate people in order to get money. And that was the beginning of my journey. And I wish I never had that. And 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 it wasn't until that, that 100K month that I said, no, that was the... That was the uh, that was the turning point for me. Um, what have I done that's funny? <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've, that I've, might have been it I've too. Thought... Had we been there to be able to eavesdrop on that, <laughs> I can't yeah. believe that worked. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's, there was a lot of those. <laughs> Try this. Okay. Oh my god, that worked. <laughs> Awesome. Adam, you've been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it immensely. I know how valuable it is. Any last words for our peeps? Yeah, there is. 
Um, I sign this in all of my books. Be the difference you want to see in business. And um, when we can operate from being the difference, then through the ripple effect, we can make a huge difference in the way that uh, the way that transactions are done. I love it. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedleg. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and join our Facebook group, Business Ownership Secrets to Scaling. We'd love to connect with you. Thank you for listening to our show. I'm all about being a resource center for entrepreneurs to give them the information and the support that they need to make it in business. As such, the notes for this show can be found at our website at awarenessstrategies.com slash blog. Be sure to subscribe, give us a rating. I like five stars personally. And share with your friends.